Let us pray. Father, our hearts rejoice because of what Jesus did for us. On the cross of Calvary, he paid the whole price. And because he did, we can have the peace and the joy of God in our hearts today. We're asking that you give every one of us the faith to hold on to Jesus Christ. That Lord, all that he did on the cross of Calvary will be ours in Jesus. 
Jesus name Bless us this day Speak your word of comfort to us Lead us into the perfect will of God Show us the light by the word In Jesus name we pray It has been a wonderful time together as we have gone from verse to verse, passage to passage, studying what the Bible has for us on Christian marriage and the family. We've seen God's own provision in marriage and we have seen our own participation in that marriage. And as I bring the series on marriage to a conclusion today, I'm talking on staying together. It's wonderful to be married. It's wonderful to stay together in love and joy and peace and harmony. The psalmist in Psalm 133 talks about the staying together. You come together in holy matrimony with your husband or with your wife. You ought to think very seriously and plan very seriously. Because marriage is a life commitment. Make up your mind that once you are married, you want to stay together in the marriage union until death do you part. At least you keep on loving as you keep on living. In Psalm 133, from verse, from verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirt of his garments. As the dew of Palmon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. In this short time, as I introduce to you this day the necessity of staying together after you are married, I want you to see ten descriptive words. It's telling us that family oneness and family harmony is good. Is that the best thing you can do for your family. The greatest thing you can do for your family is to maintain the unity, the harmony in that place. Behold how good it is to be united. It is good in itself, it is good for ourselves as husbands and husband and wife, it is good for our children, it is good for the church, it is good for the nation when families stay together. It also tells us it is pleasant. Number one, it is good. Then it gives us pleasure. It is pleasant. You derive the greatest joy and pleasure and enjoyment when the family, when they are staying together. That means you are united in heart. You are united in your aim and your goal. You are staying together and your spirits are not clashing, but your spirits are living together, moving together, flowing together. And it is a pleasant thing when husband and wife will share mutual com comfort, 
in true fellowship, in an atmosphere that is totally free from strife, free from division, and free from conflict. It's says it is good, and then he tells us it's pleasant. In verse 2, he says it is precious. And looking for pearls of precious value, unity is one. You're looking for a great thing that is so precious to you, so important to you, that you ought to keep as a precious treasure. Unity and harmony in the home is one. Now the psalmist affirms that it is also holy. It says it is only because it's lightning, it is making it to be similar to the precious ointment upon the head of Aaron. Only the high priest could be anointed with that type of oil. To God and to Israel and to the priests and to the high priest and to the Lord giver Moses, it was a holy sacred thing. It was never poured upon a stranger, a type of oil. And it was never poured upon an ordinary man. All the Bible is telling you that the type of unity and harmony we are talking about between husband and wife is holy, it is set apart, it is not poured upon a stranger, upon an ordinary relationship between you and anybody else. There is a precious and holy unity between those who are married, a togetherness, a harmony that can only be found among those who are truly married. When he tells us that this unity is talking about is diffusive. It says if you put it on the head of Aaron, it will flow down to the rest of the body. The type of unity we are talking about. The lovely harmony and fellowship we are talking about. Is the one that flows and affects the whole body of the whole family. The partners, the children, and all beneath its influence are blessed and happy as this holy ointment of unity is flowing through to them. And the children are happier because of the flow of this lovely unity and harmony in the family. They are happier, they are are better because of this unity flowing to all members in the family. The psalmist tells us is talking about something that is special. Now you think about it. Something that is good. Something that is pleasant. Something that is precious. At the same time it is holy. At the same time it is, um, it is diffusive. At the same time it is special. Like the ointment, you know, it set Aaron apart for special service. I'm telling you that Aaron could never offer special service to the Lord until the anointing special holy oil came upon him. There is a healing talent in your wife. There is a healing capacity in your husband that would only be brought out in special service to the family, to the church, and to the nation as the holy oil of unity and harmony is preserved in that home. Talent is to be able to find out that you are here, but you are not here, but you are 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 here. The wisdom to be a high priest was in error. The capacity, the possibility was in error. Until that special holy anointing 
death, the blessing, even life forevermore. And so that is why we want to really examine the unity that ought to be in the family, which we call staying together. We're putting this message under two uh, sections. The divine presentation and the human realization. You see, the intention of God for marriage is that we stay together. Is that we live together. Love together. Pray together. Do everything together. The Bible says in plain, clear language, we just become one flesh. And under the divine presentation for marriage, I'm going to talk of God's plan, Christ preaching, and the Spirit's picture. The plan of God, the preaching of Christ, and the picture of the Spirit. That was the plan of God in our marriage. It's in Genesis chapter 2. Reading there from verse 22. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis Verse 22. And the reap which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And in verse 23, And Adam said, This is now, bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Verse 25. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. And shall cleave unto his wife. Be joined unto his wife. Stay with his wife. Live with his wife. Be united with his wife. And the two of them shall become one flesh. Not two tenants living in a home. Not like two co-workers sharing the same office. Not, not like two people sharing the same kitchen. Not like two friends sharing the same bank account. Not like two business partners who are just taking care of something. The two shall become one flesh. They become one flesh because they become indivisible. They become one flesh because they become indissoluble. And it means they are there to live together, to love together just for life. And you know in Malachi chapter 2. That's the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 2. Reading from verse 13. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out in so much that he regarded not the offering anymore, or receive it with goodwill at your hand. You know, the Bible tells Israel, Israel has left the good thing, the enemy shall pursue him. The good thing is the unity in the marriage. The pleasant thing is the living together, staying together. The Bible says it is good, it is pleasant, it is precious, it is holy. It tells us it is that 
special and it is flowing. It is refreshing and leading to the people that are so joined together. And it is there that the Lord has commanded blessing. But to see the children of Israel, they left this good thing. And they were seeking God with prayer. Tears and weeping and strong crying. And God says, I will not answer your prayer. I will not hear you. Verse 14, yet ye say, wherefore, what have we done? Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treasurously. Yet is she thy companion, the wife of the covenant. You know, they are dealt treasurously. Some of these men had left their wives. And you know, they were just praying and saying, Oh God, you know, I'm free now. Can you choose another person for me? And God said, I'll be witness between you and your wife. Already you have dealt treasurously against her. You treated her. You have become divided. And you have become separated. And you have become divorced. Yet in my sight is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. That you have not agreed with the separation. You can never bring God into agreement with separation or with divorce or with division or with conflict in the family. In verse 15, did he not make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take it to your spirit. Let none of you deal treasurously against the wife of his youth. Who is the wife of his youth? The first wife you ever married. That had never married another man before. That's the Bible calls her the wife of thy covenant in verse 14. In verse 15, he calls her, you know, that wife, the wife of his youth. Verse 16. See this, this is just marvelous. You know, some people don't know the mind of God about marriage. So verse 16 says, For the Lord, the God of Israel, says that he hated putting away. God hates divorce. He hates separation. For one covereth violence with his garment, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take it to your spirit, that ye deal not treasurously. That's the plan of God for marriage. That once those two people come together, as long as they live, they shall love one another. As long as they live, they shall be together. In Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 1 to verse 3, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, the mind of God, the intention of God. How that the law, that is the word of God, has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Verse 2. For the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as she lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. 
Sugar be okona baku atu sile kuro ninu ofin okona. Now when you have been married as long as you are living and as long as your husband is living or your wife is living, stay together. No ba to ba ti se gbe yawo ti oko re wa laye ti aya re wa laye ejo ma gbe po. And in verse 3, ese keta. So it last part of verse 2. If the husband be there, she is loose from the law of husband. So then, if while her husband leaves, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be there, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Sugar be okay, right? But who over law will finance? He use he use the Japan shaga be open your come. You see, when God created Adam and Eve, nobody tell us that Adam was safe. God could have created an Esther and Elizabeth together with Eve. Oh no, no, but but the da Esther is pelu pelu Elizabeth is not pelu. Just put Esther and Esther and Elizabeth and all these other people having the same initials with Eve. Just put them in another garden and say, Adam, if there is any trouble. Call on me, kick out that woman, there's another Esther there. Eh, ki o lor, ki o wada, eh, Elizabeth, ito tu wa, ki o tu wada, ilo minan, ke lu re, to jye ke o ru, in kanan, lo, le ta kanan, lo jombe re, ru kwa wang, ti o lor, su wa, so fwa da mou, ife, di yin, bi o ba, ta pele pele, kan, ki o ta jade, to ri kwe mouni, Elizabeth, ito, kwa. Yo, God would have created an Adam and an Eve. O lor, ni, ba da, Adam wa ti, e pa kan, then he will create another Albert somewhere, and say, Eve, you know, you have any problem with Adam, let, you know, just part, and then, Albert is there, you can get him. Kwa, ife, Albert, you know, I was going to um, a one day, and I, and I saw a signboard. He said, Spare parts sold here. You know, if your motor you know, has any problem, you have spare parts. If your marriage has a problem, no spare parts. God has no shop where you can go and buy spare parts and you know just change it, remove the ignition, remove the key and then replace it by another woman. There is no provision like that. Allah no ko ni shop ni bi to ti man ta e ni bi da ti man ta e yara igbe yawo pe boya nkan kan yo ni wa yo kokoro e kuro wa lo ra omiran wa fi si. So you see you are married you are married. O ti se igbe yawo le kan so ti ni. And it's a wonderful thing when you are married and you are staying together with just that man with just that woman. Ni ka gba ya no ni nigba to ba ti se igbe yawo ti o si duro pe lo okunrin tabi o God created just that one woman for one man. And he ordained that they should cleave together in marriage. It was to be and it is still to be a strong bond. A one flesh relationship. An indivisible relationship as long as both of them shall remain alive. And you know God has not changed his mind. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. The intention of God at the beginning is still the intention of God today. He is still for one man, one woman relationship. He is still for no divorce and remarriage. He is still for living together, staying together, united together as long as both of you shall remain alive. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 For I am the Lord, I change not I'll show you the plan of God Now let me show you the preaching of Christ Concerning this, uh, you know, the, the intention of God The divine intention or the divine presentation for marriage in Matthew chapter 19. You know, I'm reading there from verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And when Pharisees see what's all done, and one done, we want to be fun, pay, oh, how tough one, can you kill quiet, let me tell you on a boo boo. 
wanted to know whether there was a reason they could just, you know, divorce their wives. And in verse 4, he answered and said unto them, Have ye never read your Bible? Have ye never read that which that he which made them at the beginning made them male singular and female singular? Just one male and one female. And said. You see, you can never get Jesus to contradict his father in heaven. You can never get Jesus to preach anything that will just oppose or be contrary to what the father had established at the beginning of creation. You know, they came to him and they said, can we pull apart? Can we rip ourselves apart? Can we separate? We Houses. And we just go to the court and you know finalize everything and just be put asunder. Have you not heard what my father said about it? Have you not read what was written in the word of God concerning that matter? That my father created them at the beginning, created them male and female. And said for this cause, for this reason, shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and that way, only two, shall be one flesh. Oh, we can it already. You are going to show if you are bad. You are still a you for my yare. I will make you just a Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. Nitori na wa ki she meji ma biko shara kan. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Nitori na o ti Allah no ba so shaka ki. Reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I'm reading there in verses 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Keep staying together. Keep living together. together. If there are problems, see how to present the problems to God. Solve the problems and keep staying together. Because this is the commandment of the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, she should not depart, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. In uh, Matthew chapter 4, I'm reading there in verse 4. You know, the, the devil may come to tempt you. The devil may come to tell you now, read that thing apart. Divide Buy that one flesh and keep that woman away, throw that man away. Ishule man so far, you pay, you walk in, you can, you walk in, are a queen around, you kill the soul, being in the sea, book you, my back in the law. Now the devil came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He should talk Jesus Christ to Lua and tempted him to go against the plan of God for his life. Lati Lodi said to a lot of people, he said, I am the verse 4. Nino say, Kenny. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not lay by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So go down we pay at the core in your yo wa lie ni pa karani kan bi ko se ni pa gbogbo oro ti o ti enu what is the word proceeding out of the mouth of God concerning your marriage? Ki si ni oro to ti enu Olorun jade wa ni pa igbeyawo re. I have been witness between you and the wife of your youth. Therefore take it that you did not treasurely against your wife. Mo ti je leri laarin iwo aya iwe re laarin iwo aya ma je mu re nitori na ma se ma se wa 
by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What is the word proceeding out of the mouth of God for your marriage? This cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So you can see the preaching of Christ com, uh, confirms the plan of the provision of God. That your marriage shall stand as long as both of you shall continue to live. And again, we are told that marriage is a one man, one woman relationship. It's a one man, one woman life commitment. It's an indissoluble union. And you know, Jesus declared that marriage is the work of God. Therefore, he tells the court and tells everybody, don't touch it. Jesus is so bad you see the plan of God the preaching of Christ now the picture of the spirit in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 the Holy Spirit gave the proper picture of marriage to the Apostle Paul you know when God the Father God the Son and the God the Holy Ghost are united on something if you are a believer, you just get into that union and you become united with God. If God the Father has planned it, and God the Son Jesus Christ has preached it, and God the Holy Spirit has pictured it to us, as believers who believe in God Almighty, but Jesus as our Savior, for the Holy Ghost as a comfort and as a guide. You just must follow that plan, preaching, and picture. And so in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading there from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for age. That he might present, uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own body see that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as they love the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones you remember what Adam said this now is bone of my bone flesh of my flesh and he says the church are members of the body of Christ you cannot divide Christ and the church in the same way the husband and the wife they are one flesh and you cannot divide the husband and the wife and it says for this cause in verse 31 shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they two shall be one flesh so you can see in Genesis chapter 2 God the father talked about one flesh in Genesis chapter 2 in Matthew chapter 19 verses 4 to 6 God the Son talked about the one flesh relationship and in Ephesians chapter 5 which we are reading the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul talked about the one flesh relationship verse 32 he says this is a great mystery but I also speak 
concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Even as himself. Even as himself. Do you forsake yourself when you are sick? No, you love yourself when you are sick. And therefore, if you love yourself when you are sick, love your wife when she is sick. No, even when you have a mental problem. Do you forsake yourself? Oh no, nothing like that at all. In the same way, whatever problem your husband or your wife may have, do not forsake him, do not forsake her. And the wife see that she reverences her husband. That's the picture the Holy Spirit has given to us. Now, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? How do we make it work? Let's go to Romans chapter 5. 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 You see, in Galatians chapter 5, the Bible is very, very clear. Do you know what destroys marriage? Do you know what removes the pleasant thing, the good thing, the holy thing, the happy union between husband and wife? Do you know what destroys marriage? You don't have to go too far. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, these are the things that bring problems upon us in our marriage. Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these. Adultery. That's an enemy of marriage. Once adultery comes in, a stable marriage becomes unstable. Security in the marriage turns into insecurity. Love is turning to self and hatred. And there is division and conflict and strife and then fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulation wrath strife sedition heresy envy murder drunkenness rebellion and such life they disturb marriage but then they do not only disturb marriage, they disturb us from getting to the kingdom of God. You lose your peace, you lose your joy when you get into this thing. You lose your security and your rest of mind. You lose your health. You lose your manhood when you get into this thing we are talking about. When you get into adultery and fornication, you even lose your self esteem and self respect. You lose the self-confidence you have in you and yourself. And you lose, you know, the rest of mind, everything you've got. And you lose the peace of God. The salvation of your soul. The kingdom of God. And of course, you also lose your marriage. You, you may still be staying together, but you know, are you enjoying it? What keeps a marriage together? And you know, you don't have to go too far. And if you just stay in this chapter, your marriage will be together. You married with your husband and with your wife. You are already a believer right now. And I say, what can I do? I want that happy union and that affection and that harmony within us. What can I do? This is all you need to keep your marriage together. Verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love. You need more than that. To keep your, to keep your marriage together. All you need. Love. You know when you love one another. I'm talking about sacrificial love. 
I'm talking about love that is not selfie, that will think of the other fellow. You, the wife, will think of the husband. The husband will think of the wife. I'm talking about love that is sacrificial. I'm talking about love that is sacrificial. I'm talking about love that is sacrificial. Love that denies self. Love that is unselfish. I'm talking about a love that is kind. I'm talking about a type of love that is tender. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, this is the love that keeps the marriage together. Be ye kind one to another. The husband will be kind to the wife and the wife will be kind to the husband. Tender hearted. And out of tender heart, tender words will come out. Forgiving one another. That is the love you are talking about in marriage. How far do you forgive? Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. How did God forgive you? Did he forgive you only nine sins out of ten and say, then come back next year and forgive the rest? You know your wife has offended you. And uh, you know, okay, I'll be able to forgive you two of those uh, five uh, sins you have committed, but the rest three, I think I'll have to wait till next year. While you are waiting to forgive her, you are punishing her. You turn her into a secondary school girl. You even beat her as if you are beating a secondary school girl. And then you withdraw pocket money from her like we withdraw pocket money from secondary school children. We even tell her she may not be able to eat, you know, we're just dealing with her as if she is a servant, a school girl, uh, you know, somebody that has no self esteem, no self respect. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. You say, my brother, I like to forgive, but I want to know the measure. That's a good question. In uh, Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, verse 3, take it to yourselves if thy brother trespass against the rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. You must underline verse 4. That's what makes the difference between church goer and believer. You must underline this verse 4. It's the difference between the Sunday Christian and the daily Christian. This is the one that makes a man between the Christmas Christian and you know the real believer. Don't know the difference between a religious fellow and a righteous fellow. That's what will tell you the difference. You want to know whether your wife is a Christian? But Paul will tell you. You want to know whether your husband is a real believer following the Lord, obeying the Lord. But Paul will tell you. What does it say? Verse 4. Let me read it to you. Verse 4. Verse 4. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, please do me a favor. Underline in a day. Be over six, be over six, only a Leo job, should you like no for me to buy me for a seal job? Seven times in a day, and he made a Leo job. Grace is wonderful, grace is pleasant. When you have the grace of God, you will smile through the top. Well, I'm not ready, Lani. You will forgive seven times in a day. That is the Lani made a Leo job. Seven times in a day, turn to thee saying, I'm sorry, I repent. Uh huh, that's what you did in the morning. No, don't say that just. Say, I forgive you, my wife. I forgive you, my 
erin meje le odo ti o si pada to wa le erin meje le odo pe morunu po ada ma je wi pe eh eh mo ran te ile to se laaro rara nkan ti wa kan se ni pe mo dariji aya mi mo dariji oko mi you know what peter said o mo ti pe teru wi he said that his name is not written there how do you know peter talk o ni oru a o ko ruko re sile ba o lo se mo pe peter soro just write it down sa ko sile that peter was among the people that you know talk that of us for pe teru ji ara won to so leyin e se ikerin when we get to heaven i want you to do something go to peter and say bro pray that you know you are the you are one of the people that said this nigba to ba donu iwo lo ba peteru ko so pe bro so pe oja awon kan ninu awon to wa to so nigba ti an soro yi peter was married peteru se gbe yawo and jesus said when you offended seven times in a day forgive and peter was among the people the apostles said unto the lord ah increase our faith eh ni ni peteru wa lara awon ti o to to wa ni be nigba ti jesus n soro yi ti wi pe ni nigba ti eni keji re ba se o ni eni meje ni ojo to ba si to wa ki o dariji seven wa wi pe o la seven times in a day eni meje ni ojo and you realize when you forgive you forget ba si mo pe nigba to ba dariji wa gbagbe all the seven times of yesterday that one is washed away o gbe igba meje ana ati wo eso nu and today lo ni pe this is you know just going to about 10:30 o si mo pe nkan bi agun mewa mo lo pe ni bi she has only offended you two times oya e meji pe la so lo ise o and you know she is still going to the limit of seven eh bi eh keje lo si nlo the toast in the morning is born eh nkan ti o se la ro jo the water is not in the bathroom in time o mi ko ti ti de ba lo wa your clothes is not iron a ko lo aso re and the children you know the children are not well cared for o si toju awon mo daada and she is not doing what she ought to do for you o si se awon kan to ye ko se fun o how many times in a day ni gba be lo lo jo just keep on forgive sa ma dariji if jesus you know surprises these people jesus ti le ya awon eni awon ilenu matthew chapter 18 matthew ori keji ni logun love is what will keep your marriage together if any o ti o pa igbe yawo re mo the love that will never criticize if e te ko ni benu atelu ni in matthew chapter 18 matthew ori keji ni logun verse 21 ese ko kan ni logun here we come o ni yi then came peter to him and said lord how much shall my brother sin against me and i forgive him till seven times nigba na ni pe teru to wa wi pe oluwa nigba mi lo le ara kunrin mi yo se mi ti emi o si fi ji titi di igba meje yes i remember you told us seven times in a day is that the whole limit of everything be ni mo ran ti igba to so fun pe lerin meje lo ojo se o ton ni and jesus said that was when i was talking about a day jesus o si dawo pe ani igba ti mo so ni pa ojo ni jesus said unto him i say not unto thee until seven times but until seventy times seven wonderful god jesus jesus wi fun pe emi ko wi fun pe titi di igba meje bi ko se titi di igba adorin meje a olorun iya no if everybody obey that sentence there will be no more divorce bi gbogbo eni ba gbo ran si gbo no yi lenu ko ni si ko sile mo 70 times 7 igba adorin meje do you know anybody that has ever offended you 70 times 7 in your ti ran ti enikan to se oni igba adorin meje ri if you go to god and say i'm having a hard time with my wife bi o ba ti olorun lo to wi pe ah olorun nkan le pelu emi she has offended me so much i just cannot live together with her anymore o se mi to be ge to je pe nko le ba gbe mo and god says it's all right can you tell me all the all the things she has done alon si wi pe eh se o le so gbogbo nkan to se fun mi so god number 1 she did this oni olorun e kini o se le number 2 she did this e keji o se le number 3 she did this By the time you get to 20 or 30, you say, "God, I don't remember any other." Nigba to ba kan to ba de ogun ogun wa ni Olorun ko tile ran ti o miran mo. And God say, "Haven't you read your Bible?" Olorun say, "Ask him to." Don't you have grace in your heart? O ko wa lori o fe lokan. Don't you understand how far Jesus went on the cross of Calvary to die for you and to forgive you your sins? O ko ma bi Jesus ti lo to lori agbele bu ni ka fari ni lati ku ki o si dare ese re ji o. And then God say, "So cannot remember that sins your wife committed against you. You stand up and let me tell you how many sins you committed." against me Allah si wi pe Allah si wi pe ese ti yawo re se oko oko to ogbon oko si le ran ti re ma iwo duro je kin so awon you know God remembers everything oh my god Allah ran ti gbogbo God begins to number them Allah si be si nka won ko to 100 and to 200 and to 300 and to 1000 you say God me he says yes i forgive you all that yo so yo si ma lo ogorun igba odunrun egberun wa wi pe Allah re mi nikan so be ni mo dari gbogbo yi ni you know in verse 23 o si ma ninu ese ketale lo therefore the kingdom of heaven is like Kingdom to a certain king, which 
would take account of his servant. When he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him that owed him ten thousand talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant fell therefore down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out. Found one of his fellow servants. We showed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him. Took him by the throat saying, Pay me that thou owest. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, Have patience with me, I will pay thee all. Ah, if another person is kneeling down before you, what do you want him to do again? Your wife is saying, Oh, my husband, I'm sorry. What do you want her to do again? Weeping and praying and pleading with you, have mercy upon me. What do you want her to do again? For this man, the Bible says he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his final servant and saw what was done. They were very sorry and they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that death because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I have pity on thee? Ah, and his Lord was wrong. Isn't God annoyed and angry and wrathful when you refuse to forgive your wife? Isn't God sad and unhappy when you keep that single sin against your wife, against your husband for one day, for one month, for one year, for ten years? He delivered him to the tormentor till he should pay all that was due unto him. I mean, if God will call you back and say, Since you are not willing to forgive your wife or forgive your husband, you come and pay me what you owe me. How will you pay God? Only Jesus can pay your debt. It is so great, it is so deep, it is so high, it is so eternal that only Jesus can pay. And if God has forgiven you, forgive your wife. Forgive your husband. Forgive your After all, what have they done? You remember Joseph? His brethren took him. He said, here comes the dreamer, let us kill him. When he came, they removed his clothes. And they, they made a goat and you know they, they killed that goat and began to eat. They put the clothes in the blood. And then he better they sold him to Egypt. You know what he suffered? He went to the house of Potiphar. The wife of Potiphar told the lie against him. From there he went to the prison. That man suffered. And eventually he came out of the prison. The Lord made him to come out. And his own brethren that sold him, they were looking for food. They came to Egypt and he recognized them. What did he do? He forgave them. He gave them food. He put their money back. He made an arrangement for them to come again. They came again. And he told them with tears and with keys. And he said, I am your brother whom you saw. But he had been separated from the family 17 years. Years or 13 years. 
Yet he forgave. See, daddy, do you remember David? David was a person that had Saul. That he did learn it on Saul. He played on the instrument. And the evil speech will depart. And he is Joseph. He said, Saul. Then he went on the battle and then he defeated Goliath. And the women began to sing. Saul became unhappy. And he was chasing that boy about. When he was playing the harp with the son, Saul threw a javelin wanting to kill. And it was a man that became just a run, run away, running about in the wilderness. He saw Saul when he was sleeping. Joab said, Let me strike him on the wall. Your enemy will die. No, he is not my enemy, he is the anointed of God. I will not touch the anointed of God with my mouth, with my hand, with my soul. He went to a far away place. He said, Saul, my father, why are you chasing after me? I love you. I never count any offense against you. My hand will never touch you. And then he apologized for even cutting his garment. Look at Jesus Christ. He healed them. He delivered them. He provided for them. He gave them food. He gave them everything. He crucified him. He crucified him. On the cross, he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken? And before he died, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Look at Stephen, the first martyr of the church. He was preaching the gospel with power. They took a stone and they began to stone him. He looked up into heaven. Father, cast not this thing against me. What has your wife done? What has your husband done that you want to divorce? Jesus said, Forgive. 70 times 7 times. Stay together. Live together. Raise your children together. Build your home together. Don't be separated. Don't live apart. Remain together. You are one flesh. It's indivisible. It's indissoluble. If you refuse, you back up. Look at verse 35. So likewise, shall my heavenly Father do also if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Forgive one another. If you are married, stay married. Rise up and let's pray. Unity in the family is wonderful. So precious. So holy and special. It's flowing and descending. The grace of God will give you the power, the ability, the energy to be able to live with your wife and husband to forgive one another. If you are separated, come back together again. If you are living apart, come back together again. There's the plan of God, there's the will of God. Search for one another. Forgive one another. And begin to live together again. Until death shall do you part.